Okay, so now we've got everything else printed, let's have a look at actually doing the lens and the bat signal. There have been a lot of bat logos over the years. This, I think, is from 2010, so there is a lot more that we could be going for, but I think this sort of classic Michael Keaton one's going to look best on the bat signal. So I'm just going to copy that create a new window. Now the thing is that I'm using Photoshop but you could use practically any art program. You don't even need to use a computer program at all. You could literally just draw this out and scan it in. We know that our lens is a 56 millimeter circle. I'm gonna make it nice and high definition. Just fill that in white, draw out our circle. Now we are using height maps here, so what's important is the darker an image it is, the thicker it will appear when you actually turn it into a 3D model. So white will be non-existent. Something like a 25% grey will give us a nice background. That is just comically small, but we can scale that up. And obviously it's looking like a computer game here, but that will give us a little bit of an idea about what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, so that's as centered as I need it to be. I've got lots of space around the outside between the bat logo and the grey because remember that there's a little lip that holds the lens in. Um, I don't want all of that jaggedness to come through so I am just doing a very quick trace using linear lasso halfway round. Back onto the background layer, fill that in black, duplicate the layer flip it horizontally and change that to darken. So now we have our bat signal on a grey background. I'm just going to save that as batsignal.jpg and now we can turn it into a height map. So everybody who's into 3D printing has heard of Shapeways. It's somebody that does your 3D printing for you. You can sell your designs through it. Um, but obviously they want as many people to use their site as possible. So they have some interesting 3D design apps. Now they have one called a Pendant Creator. What a Pendant Creator is, is basically a height map conversion tool. The idea is that you can upload your own design or use one of theirs, which I have no idea why you would. But actually I'll use this one as an example. You see where it's white in the image, it's non-existent. Where it is grey in the image, it is shaded in. Where it's black, it's just at what they call the maximum height. So if we pull up our bat logo, so we need to make sure that it is big enough. Uh, so let's just move this up to 56 millimeters. That's really close. And even though we only want this to be a millimeter thick in the end, that, that's going to be close enough for us. You can do stuff like softening the detail. You can mirror your design so it's front and back. Really good if you're doing things like a uh, two-faced coin, but we want to keep this nice and sharp and flat backed. And then we hit create my pendant. This takes a little bit of time, but once it's done, it will tell you all of the expensive shapeways methods that you can use and Quite honestly, if you want to save yourself the time, just get it in the versatile plastic, but we want to do a bit more work on this before we print it at home. So we go to My Models. You do need to set up an account to use this tool, but that's not so difficult. 
and then download. Now the problem with downloading anything from Shapeways is it comes out as this X3DB format which very little can use. However there is one nice piece of free software that will let you not only open this up but do all the editing we need to on it called Netfab Basics and that's Netfab with two B's. There are paid versions of this but Basics will let you do everything that we need it to. Once you have Netfab launched go to add part select it from your downloads and here is our disk. It looks a little bit crusty around the edges from JPEG artifacts. Uh, that won't affect our print at all. But I want to put this sideways. And you can use a slider to draw a line through the z-axis. I'm pretty much cutting it in half. Deleting the top half. And that will give us... A much cleaner bat logo. So I'm going to export this part as an STL, put it into the same folder as all my other bat signal parts. I'm going to call this full lens. Now the reason I'm going to call that full lens is because I'm going to do another cut. Again in Z, I'm just going to take that blue line just down to the last layer that's going to be all bat execute the cut delete our bat logo and leave us with what's pretty much going to be the lens in and of itself I'm going to export this part as half lens and then we're going to take this over to the printer and have a look at Cura Okay, so it's gone midnight. Um, I just wanted to double check uh, print before I went to bed. Uh, it was actually this one. Um, I had ended up printing it without supports and I was worried that those side knobs were going to print badly. But they've actually turned out pretty well. So I took all the pieces um, I just wanted to sort of put them together for a test print. I knew that the way that I design and the way that I print is always based on going to have to do a little bit more work. So, proof of concept really good. Or at least it was until I tried to fit the lamp in. And I've got all the sizing wrong because I did not double check my measurements. Um, so far I have filmed all of this as a tutorial so I guess the number one lesson that you should learn from this is double check your measurements. Um, the work is all sound, the shapes are all nice, um, it's just everything has been printed out a good 15% too big. Hmm, I guess it's broken. It's supposed to call Batman. Okay, let's see where I messed up. So since I was building this all around a set of measurements that I made right at the beginning, I completely got this width wrong. I had it as 58, um, which would have been that much, and it was indeed 48. I'd like to say it's an easy mistake to make, but it's also an easy mistake to check. But fixing it isn't that difficult with everything in Rhino. We know the measurement that we made, we know the measurement it should have been, so this gives us a scale. So we can basically go in and work out what parts need to be resized. Obviously the cowling needs to be bought in both height and depth. The length is fine because that throw measurement here that wasn't a measurement we screwed up. That's going to mean that the side pegs are going to be elliptical rather than round. But the way that they fit into the legs means that's fine and dandy. The legs we can leave as they are. I don't even need to reprint those. But the base parts, um, they're the biggest problem. Because these are all now absolutely huge. They've used up loads of filament. I'm going to have to scale them down and then rework out where all those crossover cut points for the legs are going to be. 
So I'm now going to go into Rhino, do those, set it to print overnight, and in the morning I'll get on with printing the lens. Okay, so we're back to Cura again, which means I'm printing stuff on the new matter, and we're going to be printing out the lens for our bat signal. Now, this two after it means resized. Now, since this is a flat shape, it doesn't need any support, it doesn't need anything other than to hit print. Now, I can just print this out in a clear PLA, or I may even be able to print it out in just a natural PLA, because if I tilt it up, this is so thin, light really should go through that bottom layer quite easily. And either of those, I can just paint the top black. It stands out well. It shouldn't be too difficult, but I want to do something a little bit more clever. Now, Cura gives me the print time, which is just an estimate, the amount of filament it will use, and the weight of it in the end. Now, do you remember we made that second version of the lens, which was trimmed down absolutely flat, and this is telling me that it's only going to take 6 minutes and rather than 0.58 meters, it's only 0.28. So that means that will be the amount of filament that will be in the base. So if I feed this much clear filament into my machine and then switch over to black afterwards, it should give us a two material print already colored. What does that look like in person? Let's try. Here we are. The 350 pound test monofilament. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to do this with the top off. I have here a length of clear um, PLA, which I've never used before, so I'm a little bit excited to use that. I've got my new matter all set up to accept new filament. So I'm just gonna pop this in and wait for it to start feeding through. It's taking it and it's just pushing out the black that I've got on the spool. And once I'm sure that that's 100% clear coming out, I just press this button on the front. And we're good to go. Now I'm just going to select the G code that we made in Cura. And whilst that's uploading to the machine, I'm just going to measure about 30 centimeters back from there. So according to the slicer, that's where I should be able to cut off and start putting black in. And if I was braver, I would probably do that. But what I'm going to be doing is sitting here, waiting until I can see that base layer is down properly, snipping it, and then manually feeding in the black. So, let's start it up and give it a go. That I am very happy with. Okay, let's go and have a look at all the parts. Okay, so we have our bat lens. We have the legs, which we printed off first time round. And then we have the steel piece. See how smooth that's come off the bed. Um, I also did digitally cut in some wire management stuff. And we have the roof part. Um, you can see here that it goes from grey into purple. Um, I ran out of grey. It did warn me that I was low. I didn't realise I was going to have to reprint stuff. Remember that the original base plate was 
15% larger, so that ate up so much of my stuff. Um, so I got to about there, ran out of filament, and the only other stuff I had left was purple. So it looks a little bit weird, but I'm just showing it off for now. It also meant that when I came to printing the cow, um, this is the original one, and this is the reprinted one. Again, I had to go through purple. Now, it's the same height, but every other dimension is just a little bit smaller, which means that when I bring my lamp in, it fits really snugly. You'll also see that I've just straight up glued my fan piece to the back there to hold everything into place. So let's talk about print quality. Now, my printer runs a little bit too hot. Um, there's not much I can do about it, and that does lead to a little bit of gappage on large flat tops. That's one reason why I wanted to flip over this piece so that we had that nice shiny layer. You can see on the roof piece, we've got gaps there. We've got also a little bit of spacing around those cutouts. The pegs have snapped off on test fitting. I think I probably made those a little bit too thin. It will still hold everything into place, but I'm probably gonna have to do a little bit more dressing on that when it comes to finishing it. So I am going to finish these parts, I'm going to sand down the lines, I'm going to fill in things, but for now let's just see how it looks when you put it all together. So there we have a very Batman animated style searchlight. Uh, let's actually just bring Batman in for scale. So you know it's still quite small but I didn't want anything that really took up that much space on my display shelf. And of course the most amazing thing about it is that it does light up. Now, depending on the toy series that you are collecting, this could be all you need to do with it. I mean, that purple, especially that double layer, actually gives it a very 90s Kenner look. But I'm gonna go on and do a little bit more painting, finishing and weathering and see if I can get it to look a little bit more like this one. Now this has had a lot of paint and finishing work on it. It has a slightly different movie style frame to it. The lens was printed with natural PLA and then the bat was painted. Gives it a slightly better light diffusion. That painted top layer is just a little bit more defined. So I'm probably going to put paint over the black as well. But that's it for this video. Um, we have put together a bat signal using an AliExpress lamp, which is what I said I was gonna do. I'm now gonna finish and paint this. If you are interested in seeing how I do that, hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll do that in a future video. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from this though, because I've got some other projects to show you. Thank you for following along. If you make one of these or anything using these techniques, please share it with me because I'd love to see what you guys do with it. And until next time, just remember, if you're keeping your toys mint in package, you're not a toy collector, you're a box collector. <laughs>